entering its fourth year since the 2010 redesign, the third generation Toyota Prius liftback remains by far the top selling hybrid in America. It's now been a full year since the Toyota Prius liftback is being called the liftback. Toyota had to make the distinguishment because there are now several spin-off brands and this is its own sub-brand. But before we get to that, this car is available in seven different configurations, models for the consumer two through five, including a new Persona edition for 2013. This car is, as I said, the beginning of a whole family of Prius sub-brand cars for Toyota. There's also a Prius C, a Prius V, and a plug-in version, which is very much like this one. But we're gonna be talking about the Prius Liftback, the main car, which is still selling about two to three or four times more than its family members, respectively. The fact of the matter is this car, for all its uniqueness and design, is also a form follows function exercise. It was, it was designed in a wind tunnel and its coefficient of drag of 0.25 is one of the most aerodynamically slippery designs. In this case, this car has aerodynamics that a sports car would envy, but it's not trying to go fast with it. It's trying to save fuel and thereby reduce emissions as well at the same time because they're flip side of the same coin. Furthermore, there's even a ground effects designed to this car. One thing I learned is this car has these aerodynamic cutouts which actually help with a sort of ground effects. They're not actually a spoiler. The other day I was driving down the highway and um, it, was, it was in the rain and this car just felt planted. It felt confidence inspiring. That's because this car has no aerodynamic lift to really feel. It feels like it's just ready to fly through the wind, um, which helps. It helps to minimize how much horsepower is needed at highway speeds. This car on the inside is also a form follows function design. Different people have had varying opinions about the layout of this dash, but Toyota, for their part, has tried to make this thing as ergonomically satisfying as possible. The car works uh, with an appliance like efficiency. This car here has a wireless key that is like any other wireless key. You don't have to plug it in anywhere. Uh, you can have it in your pocket. You can put it in the car and um, it won't even let you lock yourself out. So it's really convenient. Just press a button to get started. Power button. <clears throat> Everything lights up. The car has what's called a flying buttress <clears throat> center here in lieu of a center stack or as the center stack. All the displays are easily accessible, visible, some of them duplicated. For instance, on your steering wheel, this particular iteration has what's called its touch tracer. So when I touch these buttons here on the steering wheel, I see them on my center mounted display. So this is Toyota's idea of safety convenience. I can, can, I can toggle through my various uh, radio, my trip distance, my data, various other functions so that I can uh, not have to take my eyes off the road, preferably to try to minimize distracted driving, which is a, a never-ending thing here. We have with more and more infotainment, the, uh, the danger of distracted driving comes up, so they're trying to minimize that. Also, you have Toyota's trademark joystick in lieu of a shifter, which Ford has already seen fit to make fun of uh, in their ads as they're panning this car. It has two glove boxes, one below and one above. And so lots of space there. You also have here a, um, a center mounted console, cup holders, cup holder here, cup holder on the door. Down below, uh, underneath the flying buttress design, you have um, your seat heater button for this particular model. The hood is cut away. They have quarter windows cut into the A-pillars. Up top you have your, your lights and you have a little sunglass holder as well. And you also have a little opera mirror here that, with a light that comes on when you slide the mirror. All in all, this, this car is a very functional car. It's, um, it's user friendly, everything works. And um, while people have various opinions about what they think of the styling of the car. Most people who get in the car and use it find that it, it, it works and they, and they get used to it pretty well. Steer is reasonably true. Uh, it, it tracks a line fine. It handles bumps adequately for a compact slash mid-sized car. Lateral acceleration is okay for, call it 
75 percentile, 85 percentile cornering. It certainly is no all-out sports car, never what it's trying to be. There's the famous Prius blind spot in the back, which you can see the split rear hatch, which is split by the spoiler. Uh, also outside the rear quarter window, or lack of quarter window, um, there's a small quarter window, but through that, the rear quarter panel, I should say, of the roof line, you have a bit of a blind spot. So it's helpful to have mirrors, it's helpful to have a backup camera, it's helpful to know how to use them as well as doing the usual visual check. Its coast down seems to be so much more efficient than other cars. You let off the fuel and it just keeps going, which tells you you didn't need a whole lot of energy to keep the thing going in the first place. That's where the aerodynamics pay off. For normal daily driving, this car does not leave a whole lot to be desired. The car is becoming quite, quite commonplace. You know, it's, it's just a matter of time, and it probably already is, that people would just say, this is just a car, a mainstream vehicle, if there ever was one. You can't turn around anymore and not see a Prius anymore. It's just, just go through an average day and, and count how many Prii you count. More and more people are queuing into what this car can do for them.